Hi, and welcome back to yet another exciting week of the Lazy Money Game. In this week's episode, I will start by giving an update to my portfolio, and then I will discuss my latest purchase. So let's start with a quick portfolio update. Well, the first thing we immediately notice is that there was a green circle for this week's episode. If we then go to the Portfolio Values tab, you can see that the value of the portfolio has increased with close to $16,000. But at the same time, you can see that the cost has also gone up by nearly 7,000. So even though I'm hitting a new all-time high, it is not only gains in the portfolio. But despite that, I think close to $9,000 in gains within a single week is still the best that the market has ever treated my portfolio to this new all-time high of closing in at $220,000. So before we take a closer look at the latest addition to the portfolio, well, then let's first continue to my favorites tab, namely the dividends tab, since I have received a little less than $30 from General Dynamics within this week. And if we then go to the overview arc here and scroll all the way to the top, so now you can see all the holdings in the portfolio, and at the same time, you can see my latest addition, namely Stanley Black & Decker. And if we just make a quick comment on the market news, then Thursday this week, we saw this article from the Wall Street Journal. I will, of course, leave a link in the description below that the U.S. inflation has eased slightly since it is now down to 8.5% from 9.1% previously. So what does this mean? Well, perhaps this means that the inflation has peaked. No one knows for certain. But at least it seems like that is what a lot of professional investors are believing since we can see that the price of shares in general have increased quite significantly. So is this the reason for why I have made a new purchase? Actually not. I am simply just buying every time that I think I have accumulated enough capital and then I will buy into companies or businesses when I feel I can get them at attractive valuations. And that is the case for Stanley Black & Decker, at least seen from my humble opinion. Of course, this is not a recommendation that you go out and buy it. I am simply showing what I am doing here. So let's continue with a closer look at Stanley Black & Decker. So first of all, if you're not familiar with the company, I highly recommend that you go in and take a closer look at the About section to understand more about their business. But let me just try and give a very brief overview here. So first of all, Stanley Black & Decker is quite an old company. It was formed in 1843. Of course, it was later merged since it didn't start out the way that it is today. What are they known for? What are they producing? Well, they are making tools and storage, and then they have some security service as well. If we continue to the investor relationship page, then we can see that they have been paying out a consecutive dividend payment for 146 years in a row. This is actually a dividend king company, meaning that they have been paying out an increasing dividend for the last 50 years. If we then continue to Seeking Alpha, just to take a quick look at the share price here, well, then we can see that this has actually been a terrible investment over the last five years. And it was not too surprising to see that they were heavily affected during the pandemic in 2020. And I mean, since they are providing tools for a lot of these do-it-yourself types. This is one of their main products. Well, it is not too surprising to see that the stock severely rallied because what could people spend their money on? They could try and improve their home. And that being said, when you have done that for a year and a half and you couldn't spend your money on something else, then it is also not too surprising to see that currently they are struggling quite a bit to keep their sales up since perhaps people are fully loaded with the equipments that they actually need. So I am not expecting this stock to make a quick rebound or a quick recovery. This is really a long-term play. If we then continue to the dividends tab and scroll down here just to see how the dividend yield has been, well, I mean, currently you are getting a yield above 3%. Of course, you could get that during the pandemic as well, but I mean, over the last five years, you wouldn't be able to get a yield above 3%. If we go to macro trends, just to have a little longer history, well, then you can see that you actually had to go back all the way to 2011 to see a higher yield than what you are seeing today. That means 
There might be some short-term headwinds here, but if you believe that they are able to recover, then this is actually a pretty good entry point, at least seen from the valuation perspective. But clearly the market sees that there are a lot of issues and they have priced the stock accordingly since it is down more than 50% from the peak in 2021. If we then go to Open Insiders just to see what the people who supposedly know the most about the business are doing, well, then we can see that the majority has been selling, but just 10 days ago, there was an insider buying just below $96. Ideally, of course, I would have liked to see many more insiders buying to have a much stronger conviction, but at least I'm pretty pleased to see that somebody is buying just a little below the price which I am capable of buying at. And I mean, when I'm looking at these sales prices, then we're already up to close to $160, meaning a potential of 60% gains. I mean, time will have to tell where we will go, but at least it is nice to see that there's someone on the inside who is willing to buy at around these prices. So now we have seen that the dividend yield is quite good. We have seen what the insiders are doing. Perhaps it is actually a good time now to take a look at the investor presentations. Since this is a 69 page document, I'm not going to go through it in detail. I'm just going to highlight a couple of things, which I believe is quite relevant if you are considering an investment into this business. So if we start with the long term goals and revenue growth organically of four to six percent with a general revenue growth of 10 to 12 percent and earnings per share growth between 10 to 12 percent, they would like to continue this strong dividend growth. And of course, they would like to remain a strong investment grade, meaning they are keeping up their current credit rating. So how do they expect to deliver on these results? Well, one of the slides that caught my attention was this electrification that they have a significant growth and ESG opportunity. Since currently they are making around $10 per internal combustion vehicle, which is just a fancy word for a petrol car. And in the future, they would be able to make between 30 and $60 per electric or uh, hyper electric vehicle. I mean, electrification, if it wasn't for ESG, this must be the most used buzzwords these days when it comes to investor presentations. You must have an electrification strategy. So, I mean, I was actually laughing pretty hard when I saw this slide, but it's at least nice to see that they have a strategy for how they expect to earn more in the future. And as always, when you're doing your research, remember to look for arguments against what you are trying to do. So I will, of course, leave a link in the description below for this article to Yahoo Finance, why you must avoid Stanley Black and Decker stock at the moment. So that actually sums it up for yet another exciting week of the Lazy Money Game. So hopefully I have presented my arguments for why I'm buying into Stanley Black and Decker as a long term investor and also made it pretty clear why there might be some short term headwinds coming up. And I mean, this is always the fascinating thing about the market, that there are so many different opinions and that is why there is a market, because if it was completely clear what was about to happen, no one would be on the opposite side of that trade. So if you have made it all the way to the end of the video and have enjoyed the content, then please consider leaving a like. It really helps out the channel a lot. And until I see you next time, bye.